When I was a kid, I really loved to read. My dad used to say that I could go over a 100 page book every day after coming back home from school. But over time, I lost this ability. Why? It started when, in fourth grade, our elementary school started to assign points to certain books based on vocabulary or genre. We would have to read a certain amount of books in order to reach a minimum amount of reading points by the end of the year. Then later in high school, we received assignments to read certain pages every week and were tested often to make sure we were reading. Needless to say, reading became more about getting a grade than it was enjoying the story. So I lost the motivation to read like I did before. Thankfully, I've renewed my love for learning and reading over time. But it makes you think about the countless amount of people who have probably faced this phenomenon before. It starts when you're young, and then it affects you more as you grow older. This can be applied to life in general as people go from pursuing grades and praise from teachers to raises and respect from colleagues. This mindset is what separates success from failure. If you continue to let the world decide what you want to do based on punishment and reward, then you will inevitably fall short. I'm talking about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Let me show you how these ideas affect your life and how you can take advantage of them in order to create your own destiny. Let's go. Two professors and one great series of studies. Intrinsic and extrinsic motivation were the brainchild of Edward L. Desi and Richard M. Ryan, two researchers who published their work on the psychological basis of motivation while working at the University of Rochester in New York. Their writings showed that pursuits based on rewards, punishments, and the way that people think of us are ultimately flawed and will actually lead to us feeling unsatisfied and regretful in the long run. In order for us to obtain long-lasting happiness and satisfaction in the things that we're doing, we need to have what is called intrinsic motivation, meaning we need to make decisions based on our creativity and sense of purpose, the foundation for our interests, curiosity, and other values. This can be a very difficult task if you believe that people have been making a lot of decisions for you. So how do you choose between the things that you're actually interested in versus the things that other people want you to do. You do not have to follow the trend that Rene Descartes and other modern thinkers believe, that you have to doubt or dismantle everything you believe in order to discover what you really want. According to self-determination theory, Desi and Ryan gave us three factors that ultimately lead to obtaining the highest form of motivation. If you keep these ideas in mind, you can find what you are truly looking for and set a clear course for what you want to do in the future. Relatedness. Relatedness is our desire to be connected to others, to be loved and respected. If we feel that we can connect with others and feel like we belong, we are more likely to be in the right environment or profession where we can thrive. Competence. Competence is the belief we have in our ability to do something well. This confidence, coupled with the ability to gauge our abilities and expectations, can bring us to ideas and activities that we feel happy doing. Autonomy. Autonomy is the idea that you are free and able to make choices by yourself and do things the way you like. You'll know that this is an important one if you've ever been told to do chores or an assignment you didn't like. Without autonomy, our potential and motivation are cut short. Let's go back to our objective. How do competence, autonomy, and relatedness help us in our life? Whenever you are brought to a big decision in life, especially with graduating high school, you are given options that will have a big impact on how you will live for the next few years. While you may be inclined to listen to those who you know and love, depending on their answers to guide you can lead you astray. You are the only one living your life, so you have to keep yourself in mind when making a decision. Don't take my word for it. Get as much information as you can from as many people and sources you have available. Then, use these three factors as a standard for you to evaluate what option will be the most 
practical for your life. When armed with the right tools and resources, you can make the impossible possible. Use the concepts of self-determination theory in order to understand what you truly want and what will make you happy. And all it takes is just a little bit of effort and a little bit of time and you'll be able to get there. And we'll do it together. See you next week.